The first thing we ought to do to solve this question is to make a little xy table to kind of help us graph the function. In this case, the function is y equals 4 minus x squared. One way of graphing a parabolic function is to find the intercepts. And for example, if we made the x value 0 and plug that into this function, then the y would equal 4. And then similarly, if we made the y value 0, and for this we might wish to make an aside here, we could solve that for x by adding the x squared to the other side and then square rooting. Remember, when you square root 4, you get plus or minus 2. So in fact, there are two x-intercepts or two roots. We have negative 2, 0 and positive 2, 0. So let's graph those three points. And now inside this parabola, we are going to inscribe a rectangle. So we're going to go ahead and just arbitrarily draw that rectangle in any position, as long as it's inscribed within that parabola. And what's important to understand and to notice is that the rectangle shares a common point with the parabola right here. So that point, whose coordinates we don't know, could be labeled as x comma y. And let's remember that when we graph a point, we start at the origin and we measure out the x coordinate in this direction, so right on the x axis. And then once we reach our x coordinate, we go up the y axis in this case and we make our y coordinate. So that means that this length right here is y. So if you look carefully at the rectangle, and we can just sort of draw it outside the parabola here for a moment you can see that the length of the rectangle is actually going to be 2x. Let's be careful there. A lot of students do this problem and they think that the length of the rectangle is just x, but that would only represent half of the length of the rectangle. The other side of the rectangle also has a length of x, and therefore the total length of the rectangle is 2x. And then if you look at the diagram that we drew, you can see that the width or the height, if you want to call it that, is equal to y. So those are the dimensions of our rectangle, and we are trying to maximize the area of this rectangle. So we would need an equation for the area of a rectangle. We all know from geometry that area is equal to length multiplied by width. So in our case, we would multiply the length 2x by the width y. This is great, but it has two variables. We have both x and y. You usually don't want your objective equation to have two variables. So we have to make a substitution here. But that's not going to be a problem because if you look back at the original equation, we know that the y was equal to 4 minus x squared. So that means that in this area equation, that y right there will be substituted with the 4 minus x squared. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. We would have area is equal to 2x multiplied by 4 minus x squared. And what's nice here is now the area is a function of just a single variable x. It would be easiest if we distributed this 2x. So we'll go ahead and do so. That's going to give us 8x minus 2x to the power of 3. There's our area function in its most simplified form. We can think of this area function graphically, perhaps. We have a curve, and the area, this is a very rough sketch, of course, but the area is a function of x. And at some point, at some x value, the area is going to have a maximum. And if you look at this graph, you can see that if we drew a tangent line right there, then the slope of that tangent line, represented by a prime, would equal zero. So this is the basic idea, is we need to set the slope of the tangent line equal to zero. And to do that, we need the derivative. So we're going to calculate the derivative a prime. The derivative of 8x, of course, is just 8. And then we do a power rule for the other term. We're going to have 6x to the power of 2. We now set that equal to zero. We're gonna solve this for x. We could subtract eight from both sides of this equation. This gives us negative six x squared is equal to negative eight. Divide both sides by negative six. Since you're dividing a negative by a negative, you'll get positive eight over six. Positive eight over six there. And then we could take the, well, why don't we actually reduce that fraction first? Divide top and bottom by two. We have four over three. And now we can take the square root. We take the square root, we get the square root of 4 thirds. This can be simplified as the square root of 4 over the square root of 3, but of course the square root of 4 is 2. So we have 2 over the square root of 3. This is our x value. We should probably prove that this does indeed maximize the area, and to do that we will apply a first derivative test. Now in the first derivative test, you go ahead and you plot your critical number right in the center of a number line. So in this case our critical number is 2 over root 3. 
We know that x has to be greater than zero because if you look at the original diagram, the rectangle has some positive dimension measured from the origin. So, I mean, if the x was zero, you wouldn't even have a rectangle, basically. So x has to be larger than zero. That gives the rectangle an adequate positive length. And so we'll mark off our number line with zero. But now what we do is pick some test value. We're going to pick a value here. We're also going to pick a value there. Now, it helps to understand on a calculator that 2 divided by the square root of 3 is approximately, let's see, my calculator is acting up right now, is approximately 1.15. Why don't we label that accordingly? This is 1.15. So for our first test value, we might try x is equal to 1. And then for our other test value, we could do x is equal to 2. And what you do is you plug it into the derivative. Let's go back and grab that derivative. There it is. And so we'll plug in our test value. We're going to do a prime of 1. So you would plug 1 into this function right here. When you do so, you would get a positive 2. Now, the fact that the derivative is positive means that the area is increasing in this interval. I like to draw a little upward arrow showing that the area is increasing. And then similarly, if we do a prime of 2, which was our other test value, we will get negative 16. So in this case, the area function would be decreasing because the derivative is negative. And this little sketch, this little first derivative test, shows us that at exactly x is equal to 2 over root 3, we do maximize the area. So that is great, but we want to make sure we answer the question. The question specifically asks us to find that area, to find the largest possible area. So what we'll do is look for our area function, which perhaps we can use this version of it right here, and we're going to go ahead and plug our critical number into that area function. So we're going to take that x is equal to 2 over the square root of 3, and we're going to plug it into our area. There we have it. We can now just sort of simplify this. We have this 2 over 1, and we're going to multiply that by 2 over root 3. So remember, you multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. So you'll end up with 4 over root 3. In the parentheses here, you have 4 minus, we have to square the 2 over root 3. We square the 2, that gives us 4. We square the root 3, that gives us 3. Now we need to find a common denominator in here. We'll put that 4 over 1, we'll multiply that denominator by 3 and this numerator by 3. Once we have the common denominator, we'll go ahead and subtract inside the parentheses. So we're going to end up with 8 over 3. And then finally, multiplying our numerators, we get 32. Our denominators multiplied gives us 3 root 3. So this is the maximum area of that rectangle. If you put that into your calculator, you'll get an approximate value of 6.16. So that would be an approximate answer as well.